evolution. Oh, wait. Nope, that's an evolution. So, what is evolution? Does it really happen? And if so, where's the proof? And even if it does happen and there is proof, why is it important to biology? Now, these are all really important questions that you as a beginning biologist need to be asking, and they're all questions we're going to answer right now. So, take a minute and think about all the different animals you know about. Things like squids, beetles, we have tigers, birds, spiders, all of these different animals. And if biology is the study of life, then how does biology explain the diversity of life? Now, there was a man named Charles Darwin who had the exact same question. Darwin was a naturalist, which meant that he would go out into nature and he would observe things. And one of his observations took him to the Galapagos Islands where he saw these guys. These are finches. And Darwin saw all these finches and he was like, wow, these are all the same bird. They're all finches. But why do they look different? And that's when he came up with the theory of evolution, which is the theory that one species, through environmental pressures, can become many different species. And that's what we're going to describe next with the example of the peppered moth. The Peppered Moth Long ago in England, there was a forest with light and dark colored peppered moths. All the trees in the forest were clean and light colored. The trees provided a place for the light colored moths to hide. The light trees were a problem for the dark moths. The problem for the dark moths was that they did not blend in with the light trees. They were always getting eaten by the birds. Because all the dark moths were getting eaten, the only moths around to reproduce were light moths. Most of the light moths had light colored babies and the population of light moths increased. The population of light moths continued to grow until the Industrial Revolution changed their lives forever. During the revolution, people started using machines to make goods. These machines produced a lot of black soot. All of the dark soot from the factories turned the light trees dark. Now, all of the dark moths had a place to hide. The light moths were easier to see and they started to get eaten by the birds. Because all of the light moths were getting eaten by the birds, the only moths around to reproduce were the dark moths. Most of the dark moths had dark babies, and the population of dark moths increased. The dark moths adapted to their environment. The way the color of the moths changed is known as natural selection. Natural selection is the process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment are more likely to survive, reproduce, and pass their traits to the next generation. So these peppered moths underwent evolution. As the environment became more ha habitable for the darker moths, they survived to pass on their genes and the population as a whole became more dark. Now, evolution is the process by which one species can become a new species. Well, that species come about, I guess, is the better way to put it. Um, just like Darwin said. So as individuals in a population survive to produce offspring, they pass on their genetic material, their traits and genes. If these genes are different from the majority of the population, we'll start to see a new species emerge over time. And that is how we got this guy. Believe it or not, this is the ancestor to all mammals, and their evolutionary history can be traced to reptiles. Understanding evolution is essential to understanding biology. Over the next few weeks, we're going to learn more about how evolution works and what it takes to make a successful species.